I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. And this is More The Players, the pop culture's PlayStation podcast extra. And today we're in episode seven of HBO's The Last of Us. This one is called Left Behind. And to no surprise. <laughs> and fucking weirdly, it has nothing to do with the DLC for <laughs> Yeah, no, not at all. It's it's just about how like Ali dumped <clears throat> fucking Joel's body back there, just kept on going. It's all about Joel being left behind. No, no, it's yeah. entirely the DLC. Yeah. Uh, for the game so we, we get to see uh ellie riley. you know and riley in this sort of like their, their fuck ass and around in the, soup, in, the in, in natural habitat <laughs> <laughs> in their origin story and uh yeah what do you think it's good it's very good um man. knowing what was coming because obviously the, the if you've played the game the fucking title of this episode spoils the whole thing it does it's it's yeah it's that it's that backstory it's ali's backstory it's how ali got to where she is now uh it it explains the reason why joel is taking her to the fireflies it explains pretty much everything this is the mm. yeah this is all the background law that you need to know right here in episode seven yeah and it's great like it frames every as you said it frames everything it frames yeah how you know spoilers by the way explains how ali got bit it explains a bit more of her and in terms of her connection to uh, even um, woman from the first episode. Marlene. Marlene, you know, talks about, show, we get to see what it's like living in that sort of, you know, the, the Fedra school. Um, you know, we get to see a little bit of that old world in the new, you know, when they, they, they're at the, the the mall and they flick the lights on, we see all the, all the stores and all that neon. Now, once again, having watched this in the release and the screeners, a lot of the VFX wasn't done. So I, I it, it looked cool, but everything did look a little muted. Um, but how did it look for, for you? It's still muted to a degree because obviously oh, the neon um, didn't quite pop in the it, same way. Yeah, it was it was fine. Like the arcade was really cool, <laughs> but it definitely conveyed. You know, it's got you know Ali standing up on the second story and she's standing there in in, in pitch darkness and she's freaking out because her torches are working mm. and then the, all the lights turn on and she's like, you know. But you know, it's um. So yeah, no, it does. It does look good. It um, it shows it contrasts nicely with the the muted tones of the the decrepit falling apart mall with the these still dusty but bright enough neon lights to to you know give that contrast, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and then also it 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 also gives us a deeper insight into into why Ali is the way that she is and how why she's standoffish with people because mm. you know she you know you, she explains that Riley's her best friend um you find out that Riley has run away from the Fedra in Cam and she hasn't been around for a couple of weeks and then she she sneaks back in to see Ali under false pretenses she's mm. like hey you know I want to hang out I've got something cool to show you and then they have this really nice time together and she's like hey this is this is actually me saying goodbye. I'm I'm leaving. Yeah, and I'm not coming back. She's like, so you just you know you fucking bullshitted me the whole time. You you, you got me out here. You know. And it's a, so she's, that similar and, analogy, you know, analogous yeah. situ- circumstance. What we would, that Joel and Ali's discussions last week around, hey, you take me on this whole journey and then you fuck me off. You know, it's it's yeah. And then obviously, um, as you mentioned before, we we see how Ali gets bitten. And then we see her reaction to that, mm. where she basically just takes a baseball bat to all the glass cabinets. She's just furious. Yeah. And Riley's also bitten, but Riley's just speechless. She's handles, just yeah, they handle there, very differently. Just tears in her eyes, knowing that this is the end for what they presume to be both of them. Mm. Um, obviously, we know that Ellie is immune. But yeah, it's very interesting... Um, it's very interesting to see how different people have handled it. But I think, once again, what, what we're seeing here is that further progression of knowing 
who Ali becomes, especially in what would be what would be part two or season two in the show. Yeah. Um, and having her be someone that is prone to anger and revenge. Do you lay the groundwork here? This is showing like, hey, this is how she responds to this news. But if you look over at, uh, at Riley, this is how she responds to it. And most people in, you know, it would respond on Riley's angle, really. Like yeah. just that sort of hard depresso. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, depresso of it all and you're like oh yeah this is fucked it's horrifying and like yeah. what we're seeing here as well because aside from it being ali's best friend this is where uh even especially in the game this we this is where we start to learn about uh you know ali's sexual preference in that yeah. you know we see the beginnings of a of a quite nice relationship between these two and you know as they sort sort of you know do a, bit, a little bit of young love in there as well which is nice but so then, yeah. but it, what, that also really adds to that standoffishness that Ellie presents because she's opened herself up to this person deeply, and they didn't yeah. like. They said they were going to leave, but then they left like forever because they died. Yep. Like it's pretty brutal. It's like it's a slowish episode because all it really does from memory is covering. Then- that. It, it it also explains um you know <clears throat> it further explains how she felt after meeting uh, is it sam and um sam and henry what, yep. sam and henry because she's like she already has that survivor guilt yes yes because her best friend and you know the one of the her first loves died and she didn't and now she's like i can save this kid and she couldn't do that either. And it just, it, you know, it further enforces that um, that feeling of, you know, survivor guilt and, and whatnot. It gives you a little little deeper insight into her psychology, I guess. Yeah. Which yeah. is cool. Like, it's, it's a, great. it's a, and, and again, it's a very important episode in the fact that it just, it shows Ali's origins. Because mm. uh, we see Joel's and we see the big, mm, little yeah. bit of Ali, especially with that Marlene stuff. But this is, really what lays that groundwork which is yeah. it's really really cool now one of the things that i noticed which i i guess i didn't pick up in the dlc is i feel they kind of aged up riley a little bit like i don't remember there being such a substantial age difference i don't recall to be honest i haven't played that in a very long yeah, time yeah and like to me they they are of a similar age where like i would i would see riley here to be a couple years her senior um but yeah, I think she was. I think she was sixteen. Yeah, and what Ali's what fourteen? Yeah. 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 So it would have been a couple of years. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, that checks out. A lot. A lot of growing can happen between fourteen and sixteen because the actor that they cast as Riley's like seventeen feet tall, compared to Ali. Yeah. <laughs> but like, there's a little, a lot of like, once again, this being like a straight up port, for lack of a better term, of adaption, I guess, of the DLC. For the game, there was a lot of great nods and references here. Even down to, <sighs> you can stop recording late at night. Um, late at night, it's eight thirty. We're old. Um, <laughs> you know, down with like the masks and etc. Like the mask they chose, like bang on mm. from the game. Like even down to the set with like the display cabinet mm. and everything. Like obviously, the shops are different because they they actually use some real world shops. This, which... this, this... This is another episode directed by Druckmann himself. So. Makes perfect sense why he should be the one to do this. Mm. And it really nailed it. Like, I did kind of enjoy the part like, of them sort of, you know, running across rooftops, sipping whiskey, you know. Yeah. I do have to watch it again, though. Because once again, as we said, watching the pre-release screener, there's a scene where they jump. It's like a down, it's like a kind of like a down shot and look, it's up and you see them jump across the roof and there's literally a cameraman like coming in with the camera like that. I, I presume it didn't make the cut. But as you come, as you inform me in the post uh, chat from For the Players this week, um, there's a scene where it's just straight up people off to the side, like a whole <laughs> camera crew. Yeah. So... No Starbucks coffee cups yet, though. No, or samurai wristwatches, you know. <laughs> but yeah, so there's like it's it's this weird spot because there's like it's as we discussed previously, this episode is essentially the back end, like the first episode of the third arc. 
yeah. of the series. So it's a lot of establishment. And I think that's kind of... By having this one be left behind, it really is channeling that, hey, this back arc is very Ellie-driven. Well, the first the first arc, episodes one, two, and three, Joel. Four, five, six, Joel and Ellie. Seven, eight, nine is Ellie. Yeah. At least that's what I'm seeing. Now, <coughs> Now, immediately, you know, as I said, we had access to screeners, we watched more. I, I wanted to make sure that eight and nine, I was seeing them in the best they were because they, I'm, I'm knowing what shots are coming up, it was important for me to see them the best. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, screener access got canned before I could, you know, wait for these ones. So I was like, oh, that sucks. So I'll be watching eight, nine, like, like everyone else, which is cool. Um, so I'm like, I'm speculating here about the idea of it being... <sighs> it's been a very alley-driven arc. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is a pretty pretty quick chat so far. It's, it, it, like, it's been like not even 10 minutes. Well, that's the thing. It's it's a very it was a shorter episode. It's a very tidy episode, and it, it it's very self contained. It is like the bottle yeah. episode, right? It's like this is exactly yeah. what it's for. It's exactly in this moment, like us. And it is it's built so heavily on that relationship building between the two of them, mm -hmm. between Ali and Riley. But we also sort of get to see a little bit of like a bit more about the Firefly and their almost indoctrination of youth. I guess sort of the idea of you know those that want to fight against the 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 system have that and it you know it's kind of weird that they're sort of accruing teenagers, but they also at the same time don't take everyone. Because yeah, Riley makes the comment of I spoke to Marlene to see if you could join so you can come with me, and she said no. Hmm. So it's not like they're going to take everyone. Yeah, and we were sort of get to see you know what Ali's like in her Fedra school like she's that troublemaker she's kind of disconnected we see her doing laps with headphones you know like it's interesting that like even in this post world they have to do fucking laps of the basketball court yeah that's a bit poo <laughs> gotta be able to outrun them clickers mate it's true it's card it was a zombie land cardio one of those key things yeah but uh yeah it's like for me there's like nothing that really like jumped out in terms of of what would be the build up of this no, I think it was, I think it's like you said, it was that necessary bottle episode of, <clears throat> they need to know, <clears throat> like, knowing how Ali got bit is an important... Oh, most definitely. ...piece of, inf piece of information. And it fits here, because obviously, you know, the 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 episode is front-ended with Ali and Joel getting, you know, Ali getting oh, Joel... Oh, yeah, post, yeah, post uh, and Joel the stabbing. End, and then at the back end, it's, it's Ali sewing him back together. Yeah, that... Like it, it's I, once again the symbology of that too is like that survivor in terms of that survivor's guilt. Like this yeah. is Ali getting to be that moment of no, no, I do get to save someone. Yeah, like it's it's not in the way that she originally like that she considered it in terms of having to helping to save um, Sam. Mm. Um, but like here she actually gets to save Joel, which is mm. huge. And I, it's something we didn't touch upon at, la at last week, but the, one of the final lines of episode six, where it's like, I, I don't know what to, I don't know what to fucking do without you. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of cool to have that. And like, granted, it looks like you know, you know, Joel's gonna have to try surviving what looks like an old coke den, but um, you know, it's a real like shitty shanty thing. He's on like some gross ass mattress, and you know, mm. with a wicked gut wound. And, like, knowing what the rest of the game has, these next two episodes are going to be intense. And there's a lot that's going to happen. Yeah. But I do appreciate them taking that slow burn approach and giving time to breathe, whether it be with, um, with the episode about Frank and... Um, Bill. Bill. I'm so absolutely brain farted. Yeah, between Phil, you know Frank, uh, Frank and Bill, um, we do you know because like, every, everyone talks about. I'm mean, watching some other reviews. I'm talking about how like oh a lot of this so just, there's a lot of stuff that just sort of it feels faster than it should. You know like the idea of like jumping three months for episode f was it four to five or five to six? Oh, what was that? Sorry, excuse me. When they're doing the time jump, like the three months, and now it's all winter, and then yeah, they, yeah. 
and like in the game you kind of experience that time but like i i don't i don't really mind it but because it's like the the show does work at a faster <coughs> pace however also knows when to slow down and to give these moments so we're not seeing a lot of the minor emotional connective moments that we see within the game because a lot of those come while you play yeah and that's just not something you can do here because it's a passive medium compared to a more active medium if they just do all that slow action set pieces it's not fun to watch and as we discussed a couple of weeks ago having them pick and choose when to have big action moments it makes them better and more important because they're not they have a bit bigger impact because they're not yeah, just throwaway scenes exactly like in every other episode as we talked about like with um the the big uh the big, uh, uh, clicker horde a couple episodes ago and the bloater um but yeah no i'm, I'm interested to see what these fo- these final two are i'm itching for that uh uh, for the giraffe scene because we know it's coming it has to come um, and even how they resolve it like where they let it sit because knowing how the game ends and it sits on that like shot of Ali's face I wonder are they going to do that the same we get to see Joel we'll see Joel make that choice yeah I'm very I'm very um intrigued to see what happens and i was wondering like it was it's very interesting i was wondering whether they're going to do left behind in some capacity but then when i looked at the 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 episode names i was like oh hell yeah excellent brilliant very cool but yeah look i said it's, it's a very quick episode not a lot for us to break down in terms of uh, of a larger piece because i said mm. we are in the we are in the, in, in in the go home section it's just that's you know it's a little bit more for that character background but episode eight and nine i can only assume are going to be fucking intense and very action heavy um and suspenseful but i once again we're, we're, we're what seven for seven episodes that make you want to cry and another week where i'm like this show is winning emmys <laughs> like it's it's winning awards it's too yeah. good. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be great. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Now you're as sick as a dog, so you, your brain's probably um, not functioning properly. <clears throat> oh, dude, I'm I'm fucking wrecked. It's a uh, yeah, it's it's a hot mess in my house at yeah. the moment. It's like someone um, bite me, take me out of this fucking sweat. This mess. <laughs> um, fi- yeah. Final thoughts: don't don't do dumb shit in fucking abandoned <laughs> malls. <laughs> It's, good. it's a good yeah look that experience is lovely like them playing Mortal Kombat 2 for like ever mm. is really cool um, just once again it's it's we see here we get to see Ali we see to see Ali be a kid with Sam yeah but now we get to see truly when she just gets to be a kid like for a small moment of time she got to be utterly carefree mm. and and that's when we see that that armor drop, the facade yeah. go, and we see Ali of who she is, which is this kind-hearted, energetic, you know, little kid, really. And having grown up in this world, you know, I you know she, she may be what fourteen, but she really is a kid in a lot of ways. Whether it be the naivety of a you know of not experiencing the greater world or so the greater world in terms of what we would consider the greater world and that's really uh, a whole bunch of nothing when she has the survival of the, that she's had to experience it's weird but still a good episode nonetheless mm. let us know what you thought of episode 7 of HBO's The Last of Us were you left behind probably not I hope so. I sure hope not. But anyways, if you enjoyed that conversation and you want more PlayStation-related conversation, you can check Max and I out each and every week, Monday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast services, 9 a.m. on those YouTubes, where we talk about all the latest and greatest in PlayStation. <laughs> this week, we deep dive into PlayStation VR 2. 
uh and all the and all the the major release titles as well as a bunch of cool little indies that you should probably that you most definitely should check out but <coughs> you're right yeah i oh, mean you are infected <laughs> i'm good man i hope i can i i, I don't want to get sick because i don't like getting sick but i could do with the break I mean, I did hang I'm, at your I'm house on. For, I did hang at your house for <clears throat> ten minutes. I'm on holidays from as of Wednesday, and if I'm still sick, your boy's gonna put in for sick leave. Yeah, of get a, yeah, get a med cert and go. Hey, I was sick on this leave. I can't give you my annual leave back, you bastards. But until next, until next time, I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Max Cooper. Yeah, and leave Max behind because he's sick. Yeah, he's I'm fucked. Down. Fucked. Yeah, I'm fucked. Just yeah. Just leave, leave him for the clickers and they'll be like no and they'll munch him and you and you run away